All right, good evening, everybody. I am so excited to be here tonight. Uh, this stamp set that we're gonna be working with or this bundle that we're gonna be working with um, is a, an amazing bundle. Uh, but before we get into that, my name is Julie Brown. I am a independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I love my job. I, this is, it's kind of funny when I got into this uh, originally, I kind of was, the arm was twisted behind my back and I got into doing this, but I can really tell you that of all the jobs that I've had, this is the most enjoyable job that I've ever had in my life, and I absolutely love what I do. Hey, Brenda. Hey, Mel. I'm so glad you guys are here tonight. So anyway, ooh, my lights are flashing, so let's hope that is not a problem tonight. Uh, so anyway, let me get started. Of course, you guys know I always start with um, what I call housekeeping or announcements. So let me put up really quick for those of you that are in my club and will be ordering this month. There's the hostess code. Um, and that's for orders uh, for anyone who's not in my club and would like to place an order with me. Um, you do not need to use the hostess code, but I ask that you do if your order is under $150 because that just helps my hostess. Um, you order at juliebrown.stampinup.net. And if you ever need to get in touch with me, my email is juliescreativestampin at gmail.com. Um, and then I always ask that you guys go to my Pinterest, go to my blog, um, go to my Facebook page, my YouTube page, and follow me. That way you always know when I'm going on live. All right. So the next thing that I have is a really exciting. It is a... Uh, a new starter kit for this month for anyone who's wanting to become a demonstrator. And I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about this because a lot of people think that, oh, I'm going to sign up as a demonstrator and then I'm going to have to, um, you know, do everything that Julie does. And that's not, that's not how it is. You don't have to do that. You do not have to, um, you know, do everything that I do. But, you know, I think what a lot of people do, which works really well for them, is that they sign up as a demonstrator and then they just get together once a month or once a quarter um, with their friends and have a little party and everybody orders from them and they just get together and stamp together and use all the fun products from Stampin' Up. So why am I telling you this? Because this month's um, promotion is unbelievable. So let me put it up for you guys. So it is called the Get and Go Starter Kit Promotion. And in this starter kit, you get two stamp sets that are in the annual catalog. One is the Queen Anne's Lace, and the other one is So Much Love. You also get four Granny Apple Green pre-cut card kits, which means everything is cut, and all you have to do is lick and stick and put these cards together. So if you're a new demonstrator and you're not quite sure how to um, design a card, it's already done for you for the first time that you ever go out and show somebody how to use Stampin' Up! products. You also get four Coastal Cabana pre-cut card kits, plus you get your normal um, spend $99. It costs $99 to sign up and you get $125 worth of product. So you get that whole get and go starter kit, plus you can spend $99 and get $125 worth of product. And the good news in all this is you can get the new die cutting machine in your starter kit. So again, you're gonna only spend $99 and you're gonna get a $120 die cutting machine for those of you that want the die cutting machine. If you already are happy with the die cutting machine you have and that's not something you want, then you just order uh, $125 worth of products and Stampin' Up! only charges you $99. So this is a smoking deal for September and it is only good for September. But I, you know what, I don't talk a lot about signing people up as demonstrators. Um, but I can't, I couldn't not tell you guys about this. This is just such a great deal. Um, and so if you guys have any questions or are wondering how to sign up as a demonstrator, and again, remember, you do not have to do everything that I do as a demonstrator. I have, um, you know, a lady that's part of my team that just buys Stampin' Up! products, and she is a team member, but she doesn't do any party. She doesn't do anything. She just buys product. So... 
Um, anyway, that's I just wanted to make you let you guys know about that deal because it is such a great deal. Okay, so let's look at the stamp set that we're going to be working on tonight. It is called the Ornamental Envelopes Bundle. And I have to, like, confess, when I saw this in the mini catalog, I, I just kind of went right by it. I kind of looked at it. I saw Ornamental Envelopes Bundle, and then I didn't pay any more attention to it. And then I um, ended up ordering it, and it set, and I didn't do anything with it. And um, so let me show you where it is in the, in the catalog. Let me move this out of the way. So it's on page 40, and this is what it looks like in the catalog. And so I just kept kind of buzzing right on by it. Um, and I want you to know I, I need to um, repent uh, because I started playing with this set, and it is unbelievable. Hey, Flora! By the way, Flora, your order's in, and it's here. If you need to <laughs> just let me know, I can either drop it by or you can come by and pick it up. Um, but anyway, guys, this set, I, I have to, I'm ashamed. I, I kind of overlooked it and it is a phenomenal set. So what's going to happen is because I designed probably six cards in an hour's time with this set, I'm only going to show one tonight. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to pre-record uh, the other five and I will just periodically stick it on this site Julie's creative stamping um, So you guys will need to check back and see all of the other uh, Great cards that can be made with this set. So um, Again, I I was blown away when I started playing with this set So basically it comes with this stamp set and you will notice there are no sentiments in this so you would need to use or hopefully have a sentiment set that you could use with it. But it has so many dies. Now these dies here are basically for uh, decorating your envelopes for, the, uh, for your cards, as well as this one. And then these three you can use for both card making and envelopes. And then these all cut out the, the this um, ornaments that are in the stamp set. So let's get started because this one is going to be rocking and rolling tonight. Okay, so first off, um, let's talk about what you're going to need. Oh, and I did want to talk about this. So on the envelopes, these are Stampin' Up! envelopes, and I wanted to show you what they're like because these dies are made specifically for Stampin' Up! envelopes, which, of course, you guys all know you can order. Um and if you'll look at this, it, it's really high up here, and then it has this curve here. So just so you know, they are specifically designed to work with these envelopes. Could you make them work for other envelopes? Possibly. But I've got these, so that's what I'm working with. But I did want to point that out to you. So for tonight, you will need a Whisper White uh, Stampin' Up! envelope. And then we are going to need um, basic gray card base. And this is, of course, five and a half by eight and a quarter. And I'm going to score it at um, four and a quarter. You're going to need um, a full sheet. I've already kind of cut mine. But a full sheet of the uh, Feels Like Frost Designer Series paper. And remember, this is that paper that carried over from last year. It's got the shimmery on one side and then the beautiful... Uh, like almost like pictures on the other side and then you're going to need a four by five and a quarter night of navy and a four by five and a quarter whisper white all right and then i am going to show you a really fun technique on the stamparatus tonight um, for doing wreaths on the front of your cards and so let's get started with this so um, I made this, and I know some of you have already seen this, but I made this. This is on, let me pull this off so you guys can see. I've already got it placed where I need it. But this was just a piece of, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of what this is called. This is crazy. Um, window sheet. This is a piece of window sheet. And as you can see, I have um, shapes drawn on here. And this is all um, to help me do what I'm going to show you tonight. All right. So 
um, let me get this back on here straight. And you know what? I just thought of something. I actually didn't put that in the right spot. I've got it. Or wait. Oh, yes, I did. Okay. Don't mind me. Um, but this is something that I made. Um, and so we will talk about that later. But um, so because of this, I have different size squares in here. And the smallest square is three and a half by three and a half. Hey, Cassie. So I didn't want to cut down my four by five and a quarter. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw lines on here. Um, so that I've got my three and a half by three and a half. So basically, I'm just going to bring in a ruler. Let me move this for just a second. So I'm going to bring in my ruler. And I had a pencil sitting here. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy how quickly, there it is, how quickly I lose stuff. Okay. So I'm going to bring this in. And I am going to, um, this is my one inch to three and a half inch. And I'm gonna draw a line basically all the way up so I know where the three and a half inches is. And then what I'm going to do is, um, I don't think this is three and a half inches, it might be. Yeah, but I think, oh, this is what it is. So this is still four inches from top to bottom. So I need to break that down. So I'm basically gonna take a quarter of an inch off of each side. And I'm going to, oh, golly, I can't get a hold of stuff tonight. So I'm going to measure a quarter of an inch and draw it to this line over here. And then, and I know this is really hard to see because it's on Night of Navy, but hopefully you guys can follow along with me. And then I'm going to do a quarter of an inch down. So basically, I don't know if you guys can see the lines, probably not. Oh, kind of. So basically I have drawn myself a three and a half by three and a half square in the middle. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to take this piece and I am going to, and I know this is hard to see as well. Well, I guess that looks pretty good, but I'm working with, if you'll notice, let me bring this closer. I have two squares of the same color. So I'm working with my three and a half inch square which is the dark blue. And you can see I have it drawn this way and then I have it drawn this way. So this is a triangle and this is a square. Not a triangle, but it's just, this is the pointy end and this is the straight end. Oh, I'm being so technical tonight. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this card in and I am going to line this up. The lines that I drew, I am going to line up with um, and it is kind of hard to see, but I'm looking at these two lines here. And so I'm getting those straight and then I'm just going to stick that right there. And then I'm going to put my magnet to hold it in place. I'm going to be moving this around and this, this is, this is how I do wreaths so that I can make a perfect wreath every time. All right. So now I'm going to bring in, um, I'm going to use out of this stamp set, the one that looks like pine needles. So it's this one. And I'm going to lay this down. Um, and this is going to basically be the top of my wreath. So I'm just gonna kind of lay that where I want it. And again, this is gonna be hard to see cause I'm doing this with Versamark because we're also embossing tonight. All right, so then I'm just gonna pick that up and then let's stick this under here. And then I'm gonna come in with my Versamark ink. And I am going to just lay that down. Okay, then what you do is you just move this. So now I'm gonna move it so it lines up with this square. It's the same color but I'm just going to turn it. And I know I've showed some of you this before. Some of you have seen this before. This is not new. It's been a while since I've done this. So I move that page and then I just make, do the stamp again. Okay. 
then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna move it back again so that it's with this blue square. Get it all lined up. Lay this down to kind of hold this in place. Ink this up again and stamp again. Okay, then I'm going to do turn it this way. And so basically you just kind of keep going around and around, lining this up with the square. It's a lot easier if you cut it as a three and a half by three and a half inch square, but I needed this piece to stay full. So tonight I wanted to show, so for those of you that have done this before, you can see how you do not have to cut down um, and use it just as a square. You can use a four by five and a quarter piece and still get this done. Then I'm gonna turn it again, light it up with my blue square. Stick my magnet here. And I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i show you what, what it looks like when I'm done. Stamp it again. And then we're gonna have to do this one more time. I'm gonna move this magnet though because I don't wanna accidentally touch this magnet with that magnet okay so then I'm gonna come in I'm lining it up with my blue square again and I know it's hard for you guys to see this but when you're when you're doing this in person it's really easy to see your squares and get this lined up all right oh and I forgot to do my embossing buddy first oops I'm gonna see if I can fix that in just a second okay I'm gonna make sure I keep those Okay, so let me see if I can bring this close so you guys can see. So see how it made the perfect wreath? And I didn't have to try to do that by hand. Cool, huh? All right, so let me move this for just a second because I've got to, I'm going to bring in the white embossing. I'm gonna see if I can kind of cheat here a little bit. I'm gonna bring in one of my embossing buddies and I'm gonna see if I can at least get it around the outside edge um, so that the embossing and a little bit in the middle, maybe if I kinda, um, that way my embossing powder won't stick to the middle of this. I've probably already messed that up. I wasn't even thinking about that. Okay, so then we're going to bring in our white embossing powder and we're going to pour this over our wreath. Yeah, I think I've got some big fingerprints on there. So one thing that you can do, I don't know if I have a small enough brush, but as you can see, because I didn't do my embossing buddy first, shame on me, um, let me just see. Sometimes you can come in with a um, paint brush and get some of this to actually let loose um, because I really don't want all of that because when I when of course when we heat emboss every all of, all of the powder that's on here is actually going to stay on there so that I apologize that was my bad for not using that embossing buddy first huh. okay well we're going to have a little bit of extra powder up here because it's not wanting to let loose. Okay, but I think I've done pretty good. But now you can see the wreath a lot better. Isn't that cool? Look how per like perfect that is, right? So so yeah. So see the Stamparatus has a, another use, not just getting our, our sentiments straight, but it helps us to do a wreath. All right, so it's gonna get loud because I gotta bring in my heat tool. So I'm gonna put, put, push this as far away as I can. And remember, like I've always told you, you let it heat up just a bit um, before you start heating stuff up. All right, and then we're gonna come in and heat up our embossing powder, maybe. There we go. Took it a little bit longer to get hot tonight. And I don't know if you guys can see it changing color. 
but it goes from that matte color to a very shiny color. So you're basically just gonna very slowly go all the way around because it's really important that you make sure that you have heated it all up because if not, like I'm fixing to do another, we're gonna stamp right over the top of this and heat and boss one more time. And it's really important to make sure all of this has heated up because honestly, if you touch it with your fingers, it will just wipe right away or if you put another stamp on top of it and it hasn't completely um, turned. So you can see, I don't know if you guys can see, it's shiny now. I don't know if that's coming through. Okay, so now we're gonna do this whole step again. But I'm gonna change this, the, the stamp that I'm using. So, whoops, that was truly sticking to that. All right, I'm gonna stick this up here. So, oh, I didn't clean that off. Y'all need to remind me to clean my stamps. <laughs> so let's clean that off. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to, um, I'm gonna come in with this little design here and we're gonna go over the top of what we just did. Alrighty. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to come in and I'm going to line it up with this blue. Um, and I did use permanent marker on this um, because I wanted to make sure it didn't, like if I tried to clean it or something, it didn't um, wash away my measurements. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to just lay this down and look at how I want it and then we're gonna pick it up all right and then same thing we're coming back I'm doing that double layer versa mark so we're gonna push that down give it a turn and do it again <laughs> Oh, I've already done the embossing buddy. Thanks, Mel, but I already pushed it, put it on here. You've got to do the embossing buddy actually at the very beginning. But thanks for the reminder. Um, but yeah, you do that right at the beginning because I basically already, um, I guess I could have gone over it one more time. That probably would have been smart. Um, but it's, it's the, the part that I already put on there is, is, is on there and, and actually, um, yeah, I probably should have done that. Problem is, is I'm, I'm a few, few seconds ahead of you guys, so I was already at this point. I don't know why I've, lately I have been forgetting my embossing buddy so much. Bad on me. Okay, and as you can see, I'm just turning it and lining it up each time. So aren't you guys excited that have Stamparatuses, how exciting it is? Another little technique that you can use with your Stamparatus. Okay, move this over here. Oops, that moved just a bit, that's not good. Oh no. Okay. I have to, I keep forgetting that when I move that magnet on the top, it lets loose of my my window sheet so hopefully that didn't mess it up let me see I can kind of tell yeah it did kind of okay all right that'll work all right and then I think we just have one more turn to do oh shoot I, where was I right there I always have to remember where I'm at in the process because sometimes you get a little off. 
lose track of where you're going. It's a lot harder with Versamark because it's harder to see what you've what you've stamped and what you haven't stamped. Okay, looks like I, I can kind of see that I've got that all the way around. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this stamp first really quick. I know, Mel, I love my Stamparatus too. It's such a, um, yeah, it's one of those things that you get to the point where it's hard to live without it. All right, let me just put this stamp back in here. All righty, and get put my Stamparatus to the side because we're done with that. And then I'm going to bring in my other tray. And, oh gosh, where did I set the, oh. And this time I'm gonna bring in silver embossing powder and do the same thing, just pour it over where I just embossed or where I just stamped. Oh, this did much better. It's not sticking to near as much stuff. Okay. And then obviously later I will be pouring all this back uh, just so you guys know, if you've never worked with embossing powder before, this stuff like lasts forever, forever, because you can always pour all of the extra back into your um, back into your container. All right, sorry. Here comes here comes the noise. I'm holding it away, so I'm going to heat this up. Alrighty, so hopefully that got hot enough. All right, yeah, this is heating up really quick. This is changing fast. Yay for the silver. It's playing better than the white is tonight. And I lied, I'm actually not done with my Stamparatus. Okay, so then we've got that done. So then I'm going to use the Stamparatus for what um, we normally use it for, and that is going to be for, so I'm gonna pull my window sheet off. And just so you guys can see it again, that's the window sheet. Um, and you can see I have a three and a half inch square here, and then one here. And then I think this is my four inch square and then I have a four and three quarter inch square. And I have one that goes this way and then that one that goes this way. So that's how that works. All right. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring this in because I'm gonna be stamping a sentiment onto it. And I chose, um, because I told you this stamp set, remember this stamp set does not come with sentiments. Um, so I chose the itty bitty Christmas sentiment and we're going to use this thinking of you at Christmas. And th this part of the Stamparatus everybody is used to seeing. So this is where you're just going to line this up so that it's straight. That looks pretty straight. We're gonna pick up that stamp, ink it up with Versamark, stamper, um, and I always do kind of look to make sure that I can see the Versamark. Um, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but I try to make sure I've got a good, um, like I can see all the letters and stuff on the Versamark on the stamp. Let's clean that off. All right, and then this is gonna go in here. All righty, and then I need to, sorry, we're gonna heat up one more time. I thought I was dead and then I remembered, oh wait. I did the sentiment as well. All right, so I'm gonna use the silver silver again on the sentiment. All 
Alrighty, so that looks good. And always make sure that when you bring your heat tool in that you move your embossing powder out of the way. Um, for those of you that have um, made that mistake, you know what happens. Powder goes everywhere and it takes you years to get rid of that stuff. All right, so let me heat my tool up again. It should be fairly warmed up. And I think I actually see a little spot over here that didn't heat up. Yeah, I'm glad I saw that. Okay, so now we're gonna just heat up the sentiment. Woo! That went really fast, so now it's all nice and shiny. Okay? All right, so now I'm done with my Versamark. I promise, I promise. Okay, and I've been looking for my little, oh, I did bring it back. So I had my granddaughter here today doing school, and um, she uh, was erasing some stuff. And you know how those pencils they give them from school, the erasers are just so nasty. So I was letting her use my really nice eraser, um, uh, and she fell in love with it. And uh, I wanted to make sure she didn't pocket it and take it home because she really wanted it. Okay, so then the, the lines that I drew for that three and a half inch square, I am erasing. Whoops, oh, I did not mean to fold that up. Okay, so now we're kind of ready to put the card together. And then when I'm done with the card, we're gonna do the envelope. All right, so I actually haven't scored this, so I'm just gonna kind of fold it in half. I know you guys don't see me do this very often because I usually score everything ahead of time. So I'm because I didn't score it, I'm gonna make sure I burnish it really good with my bone folder. All right, so then I'm just gonna come in and we are going to get our stamp and seal. Uh, both of my stamp and seals are on their very last little bit of uh, tape in them so I have to kind of encourage them to keep rolling all right so then we're gonna take this oh ooh, I almost forgot I'm so glad I paused so I'm bringing in um, I've used this I love this is what some of my favorite ribbon this is the um, silver metallic edged ribbon and the silver is on white ribbon and then they have the gold metallic and it's on very vanilla so I almost messed up because, um, actually I did really almost mess up. Okay, let me bring in this because I forgot. I've already put my adhesive on the back. And this, this that's another good thing for the silicone um, mat is if you've already put adhesive on the back and you still need to work on the front, you can set it down on this silicone mat and it will pull right up. But I'm gonna take this little piece here um, and this was one and a, one and three quarters by four, and I'm just gonna adhere this to this side over here. So another good use for your silicone mats, for those of you that are always wondering, is it worth getting? Absolutely, I use my silicone mat all the time as well. As you guys have seen in my demonstrations. Okay, it's really hard for me to see the edge there though. Okay. So I'm just going to lay that down and I think I got it a little high down here. And then because this is a silicone mat, I can just pull that up and my adhesive is still sticky on the back. So that makes that nice. I am going to trim this just a bit with my paper snips because I got just a slight little edge on the top there. All right, and it doesn't leave any of the adhesive on the mat either. It See, it stays completely on that, so that's a really, oh, and here I am almost messing up again. Okay, so then I'm also going to wrap this ribbon around the bottom of this. Um, I should have actually set this up a little bit higher, and I just wanna make sure I have some good adhesive where that ribbon's going to be. 
All right, so I'm gonna take this. So this, I'm gonna try to get this a little lower than I normally would, because I should have, normally I would have stamped this up a little higher, but I wasn't, I kind of forgot about the ribbon. <laughs> Because I'm so excited about this stamp set, I'm telling you. Um, I just, I honestly was not going to get this set, and I'm so glad that I did. Or this bundle. Okay, now I'm ready to put it on the card front, believe it or not. Okay, so we're going to stick this on here and try to get it centered. There we go. And we're going to leave that like that for just a second because then I'm going to bring in this piece. Oh, <laughs> that's the envelope, not the envelope. Oh, my goodness, guys. And then I'm going to bring in my silicone mat because I am going to be stamping with the um, polymer stamps. And they work better um, if you stamp on a surface like the silicone mat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to use this little corner here um, from this stamp set. I can't wait for you guys to see all the different cards that I did with this stamp set. I just, I started playing with it and I just couldn't stop. I just, oh my gosh. I just had way too much fun. Way too much fun. Okay, and then I'm going to use my Knight of Navy ink. And this one you have to be, you know, this, this is one that um, you have to be careful not to um, wobble when you're stamping. So I'm just going to line that up. Can you guys, I just want to make sure I'm in the picture. Going to line this up and I'm, I'm lining up this middle petal with that corner. And I'm just going to lightly push it down. Okay. I'm not putting very much pressure at all. And then I'm going to turn it, line it up again, and then turn it, and line it up again, and turn it, and line it up again. Isn't that pretty, guys? Look how pretty just that little tiny stamp, what it did to that page. Again, when I started using all the different stamps in this set, I just, I went a little crazy, went a little crazy, crazy. I was just popping out these and it was really, um, it was a really fun day because it was, I was very inspired by this stamp set. And so it was really easy to create that day. Um, and I love those days. I love those days where I sit down with a stamp set and it just, um, you know, and, and, and to be honest with you guys, looking at it, you would think, gosh, I'm really going to have to think what I can make out of this stamp set. And that's kind of what I thought when I sat down with it. And then when I started playing with it, just all these ideas kept popping up and it was, it was unbelievable. All right. So I'm going to line this up as straight as I can, and then hopefully get my paper also as straight as I can. And then I'm going to bring in another sentiment from the Itty Bitty Christmas, and it's this Celebrate the Season. If I can find it, there it is. It's always so funny, because you think you can find these, then you start looking at them backwards. They're a little bit harder to pick out. And this is, this is one of my favorite little blocks. It's block G, but for these little tiny um, sentiments, it works perfect. All right, so I am going to bring in my Knight of Navy ink. And let's see, sorry. Make sure you've got good coverage on your, especially on your sentiments, you want to make sure you've got good coverage. Okay, and you guys are probably going to see part of my head here because I'm going to try to lean in. My bifocals make it so hard ah! to get it straight. 
Oh, I don't think I can fix this one. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> so when something like that happens where the C just gets completely cut off, let me show you a little trick. So yeah, I should have used the Stamparatus, huh? Silly me. What was I thinking? <laughs> Trying to go fast is what I was thinking. So now, because my C didn't come in, I'm actually going to bring in my stamp and write markers, and I'm going to pull out my Knight of Navy um, marker, and then I'm just going to take this little side and um, just kind of draw in the part that didn't stamp. All right, there you go. And voila, it's fixed. See? So another good reason to have kind of all the little bits and pieces, right? Because if you mess it up, you always have the same color stamp, the same color marker to fix your little mistake there. Okay, so this is gonna go on the inside. So let's get this. And yeah, don't sign off after I get the card done because wait till you see what I do with the envelope. <laughs> All right, so then we're gonna just take this and stick this on the inside here. So isn't that pretty with the basic gray? I'm really liking the basic gray behind this. I don't know about you guys. Okay, so then I'm going to bring in my ribbon again and my little cheater <laughs> for my ribbon maker. And we're gonna make a little bow. And, I, and I'll go slow. I know you guys have seen me do this a million times. But for the smaller bow, which is what I'm making, you just work with these two legs here. And so you just wrap this around, bring it up and feed it through the center, pull it around the back and up through both legs, and then grab this little tail over here and tie your bow. All right, and then you have your beautiful bow. And then, of course, I'm going to come in with some glue dots here in just a quick sec. You can fiddle with that a little bit. And, and I'm actually going to use two glue dots. So I'm going to get one kind of on the bottom of this side. And then I'm going to grab another one for the bottom of that side. That way it just makes it easier to manip manipulate the ribbon so that it lays the way that you want on the card. So I'm just going to stick that down there. And then I'm going to trim it pretty small, actually, because I this was a little bit lower than I normally do. It moves because this ribbon isn't secured down. So hopefully I got that straight. And then I, I'm going to come in with our, um, our pearl basic jewels. And grab my take a pick tool. Again, this is something else that I just can't live without now. <laughs> just love it when that happens but you know it's all good all right and then i'm going to take one of the big ones and stick it over here and then i'm going to go down to this little medium size right here and let's see we'll put this one over here and then we'll pick up a small one and stick it right there and then another one and stick it right there. That's one, two, three. Oh, that's only four. 
I need five. Or wait, no, that's five. One, two, three. No, that's four. <laughs> and let's do another one over here in the flower, kind of. Okay. Okay, so there's the card. What do you guys think? Isn't it pretty? I, do, I love this paper too, this designer series. And it's the Feels Like Frost designer series paper. And I don't know if you can see the shiny for the wreath. And so it says, thinking of you at Christmas and then celebrate the season. And plenty of room to write a message. All right, so this is our card. And now we're gonna work on the envelope. So here's our envelope. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this envelope is I am gonna bring in the die cutting machine and the dies. And I'm gonna take this die first and we're going to kind of tape this down with some washi tape. And I'm gonna stick it right on here. And I'm getting it lined up here. And then I'll bring in the die cutting machine. All right, so Here's my die cutting machine. I have it folded out already because I've been playing with it. And so I'm just gonna lay this here and I am going to run this through. And again, I love the new die cutting machine. It's so smooth. This is the only die we're using tonight out of this whole set. Oh, that's, I lied, that is not true. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire, right? Oh. All right, let me get this off. And then we're gonna come in with this other piece. Let me move this to the side for just a second. And then I'm gonna come in with our leftover piece um, of that designer series paper, because I cut that off of this edge. So I'm gonna come in with this and our die cutting machine and let me go ahead. I'll just, I'll get everything like connected over here and then bring in the machine. And then I'm going to use, and I believe it's the second, um, second one and basically what it does is it's gonna cut this for the inside. So then I'm gonna bring this in And it won't fit that way. I'm trying to get the darker, darker part of the colors and you'll see why I wanted that in just a minute. And then again, we're gonna bring in our washi tape and then just kind of tape this down so that it stays where I want it. And then bring in my die cutting machine. And remember this die, I showed you guys this before, it's all numbered, right? So this is number one, number two, number three plate. And then this one is the other number three. So that just kind of shows you how to lay it all down together. Uh, you know, Stampin' Up! tries to make it. You guys all know me, I love the easy button. And the easier they make this for me, the better I love it. Okay, so then I'm going to pull this die off. And stick that back on my sheet. Okay, and then you can kind of decide like how much of this you want to keep and put inside your card. Um, I don't um, usually put a lot. This time I'm just going to go ahead just so I can show you like the bigger if you want to do a bigger piece. And you don't have to be exact on the cutting because this part is gonna fit down into the card. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do, let's pull this die off of this so you can see what this did. So for the next week, as I'm putting up these um, videos of all the other cards that I did with this, I will be doing a matching envelope with each one just so you can see the versatility. Okay, so I'm gonna poke all this out. 
And I want to show you this little piece. This is kind of like a, a limb. You guys could actually save this and put it on another card. Um, not that I'm encouraging saving of every little piece that you have, but you know, sometimes it's worth it. All right, so we're gonna poke all these little holes out and get this all ready. All right, let me clean up my workspace here. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I want the shiny side to show on the inside because I want the color to show through on the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna kind of slip this down in there and put it where it needs to be. And I'm still leaving part of this that glues it down, but it is gonna cover part of that. So I'm gonna get it lined up on both sides, same distance apart and the top lined up. Sometimes it's really hard for me to line things up because I have all these lights and it like reflects things off. And so what I'm gonna do just for this quick second is I'm gonna put some washi tape on here to hold this in place. And then what I do is I bring in my um, trimmer and I want to um, score this. And so I'm, I know you guys can't see it, but I'm lining it up with the fold that is in the envelope. And again, a little difficult for me to see with the lights. The lights just reflect a little too much. So I'm just gonna go in and just kind of lightly go over the designer series paper so that it has that scored edge in it. All right. Then I'm gonna pull this off and this off and then pull this out and then I'm gonna put adhesive down here. Oh. Like I said, I need to be better prepared and like make sure I have this all ready to go when I'm putting it in. So I'm only gonna put the bottom part right now um, and then I'm gonna kind of fold this so I can see like where this is gonna go. And you do have to be a little careful with this because this will stick pretty quickly. And so I'm kind of holding it up and I'm not pressing anything down and I'm lining this up with the fold on the envelope. Okay, so that's down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this over. And because this has some little edges, just because the Postal Service can be a little anal about some things. I'm just gonna go in with my liquid glue and I'm just going to just put some little dots on these little pieces that might have a tendency to try to stick up on the envelope and it's just these inner, oops, that's way too much, these inner pieces. And then I'll just come in with some more of this uh, stamp and seal and I think I'll just kind of put this there and this there and this here. Um, and then that, oh no, that was wrong. And then I'm gonna put just a couple of dots up here, um, again, just to help hold it in place. And then I'm just gonna fold that down Turn it over. If you do end up with any sticky um, areas, because the like what just happened to me, the glue kind of came out. One, you can use um, a glue eraser, and if that still doesn't get the sticky off of it, um, you can always come in with baby powder and cover it lightly with baby powder. All right. So how pretty is this? So now we're going to fold that and burnish it. All right, so now here's my card. Here's my beautiful envelope. There's the inside, and then when the card's inside, this, so basically if my card was inside there and this was closed, this is what 
they're going to see before they open it. And then they open it and it's got this beautiful shimmer on the inside. All right, so there is my first card with this great bundle. And I did wanna point something out. So if, if there's some of you who um, don't like the fit, I don't care what, what my, um, what the front of this looks like, like I'm really bad at like keeping it straight. But we also have a really cool stamp in here that you could stamp on the front of this and then have lines that you could put in the person's name, address, and city and all of that on the front. And it would make it look very professional and very pretty. And you could, like I could have come in, and I might do this later, but because the inside of this card has this stamp set, you could do the same thing around the front of this. So what do you guys think, right? A, a, a set that I almost looked past and look how beautiful this card is from this set, right? And then the envelope is just stunning as well. Yay, right? So this is the ornamental envelope and the die set that goes with it, whoops. If I can quit throwing things around. All right, and again, you do have to use a sentiment with it, like I said, because there's no sentiments on this. But how pretty is this set, guys? How pretty is that? I'm so in love with this set. And I can't wait for you guys to see um, the other cards that I do with this. So what you're gonna need to do is make sure that you are checking in this week because I will just post them randomly. I might do one as a live and then I might just pre-record one and add it to my site. So it's gonna be on this site, Julie's Creative Stamping. Um, and so just check back and look, because like I said, I think I've designed either five or six cards with this set. Um, and so I can't wait for you guys to see the possibilities with this die set and stamp set. Um, the next one I'm probably gonna do is a simple stamping one, but you guys won't believe it's simple stamping because it's so pretty, so, so pretty. Not that simple stamping's not pretty, it is. But there you go. So there's the front, the side, and then the card. So I hope everybody enjoyed this. Like I said, stamp set that I was totally thinking I was gonna ignore, um, but I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I got it, and I can't wait for you guys to see the rest of the cards that I've done with this um, and the envelopes that go along with them. So everybody have a great evening. And uh, again, just kind of, periodically check back on this site and you'll see some other videos that go along with this uh, stamp set. I haven't ever done this before, but I just had so much fun and made so many cards and I want to share them all with you. So everybody have a good evening. I'm so grateful that you spent some time with me tonight and I will be talking to everybody soon. Bye.